afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, yesterday I was talking just briefly about uh, Netanyahu's speech. I had not listened to it as of yet, uh, but I was focused more on the walkout. The different nations in here that got up basically in a solid area of protest against him and walking out of the United Nations. Now, some liken to this as a stage... Uh, as if it's a staged event, but of course I'm sure it is a staged event, but more so as symbolic. Uh, they did it intentionally, uh, only uh, following the script that's been laid out uh, that they have to follow in the first place. Well, I've got a good friend of mine who is suggesting that something big is coming in October, and it's going to have to do with Israel and Iran, so I'm waiting to see how that's going to play out as well. But when I did take the time to listen to the speech itself there, uh, at the uh, prompting of my wife to listen to this, I actually caught some things myself that maybe some, else, some others have not caught either. I want to play his speech for you here, this section of the speech anyway, and I'm going to point out a couple of very interesting thoughts for you to consider here. Singling out of the one and only Jewish state, continues to be a moral stain on the United Nations. It has made this once respected institution contemptible in the eyes of decent people everywhere. But for the Palestinians... Now, if you'll notice, Al Jazeera, they are showing both Lebanon and Gaza nowhere near the devastation, nowhere near the numbers of lives that, are, that have died there. And then Netanyahu complaining about other nations calling and condemning Israel out, well, they certainly deserve it. But that's not what you're missing. There's a very critical statement, two statements that he makes in here that we've got to take a serious look at. Palestinians, this UN house of darkness is home court. There it is. This UN house of darkness listen in again i want you to catch that it's very very important on the united nations it has made this once respected institution contemptible in the eyes of decent people everywhere but for the palestinians this u.n house of darkness is home court notice what he called the united nation or the united nations assembly this house of darkness. He is actually, whether you realize it or not, Netanyahu is now alluding to you the war between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. He's now letting you know, he is now setting the stage for a global war. Literally, a war between three entities. Edom, which Israel will consider Christianity. Moab, he'll consider that the Muslim world. And the Karim. This is what he's talking about. That's why he calls it this house of darkness. All right, now let's listen more. It's not just that. They know that in this swamp of anti-Semitic bile, there's an automatic majority willing to do, demonize the Jewish state on anything. In this anti-Israel, flat earth society, any fault. There's your second one. To demonize Israel under anything, this anti-Semitic flat earth. Note, let's back it up a little bit. I want you to hear that correctly. Anything. In this anti-Israel, flat earth society, any false charge, any outlandish allegation. One more time. One more time. Willing to do, demonize the Jewish state on anything. In this anti-Israel, flat earth society, any false charge, any outlandish allegation can muster a majority. Can muster a majority. This anti-Israel flat earth society. I could not for the life of me understand why Mr. Johnson, the very head of Morgan County's district attorney's office, made this statement in a letter 
He had Mr. Edwards send it to me, but he said this, especially concerning is some of the information gathered about you espousing flat earth theories. While this may not come up in the testimony before the grand jury, we know this about you. And some of the grand jury members may indeed know this as well. Espousing flat earth theories. You have to understand, and everybody knows already, Stephen Benoon is not a flat earther. You can look at my channel. In fact, this video right here, the very one on my channel, is, is the one that they use. Let me, that's normally the picture you see from. Or had a base down. Right? This was actually from our news broadcast when we were on national television, cable TV. And we were, all we were talking about were the fallen angels in prison in Antarctica. Not one mention of flat earth anywhere. In fact, when I did that video about urgent request and sent it out to you guys, and I asked, have I ever espoused the flat earth theory? More than 20,000 views and almost 3,000 comments later, not one person ever accused me of being a flat earther. But now I know why. Now I know why. It's a code word. It's a code word for Zionist. And how do you know? Because Netanyahu himself has just declared it. Let's listen to it again, and you'll see the code word. State on anything. In this anti-Israel, flat earth society, any false charge, any out... Anti-Israel, Flat Earth Society. If you're anti-Earth, excuse me, if you're anti-Israel, they considered you a Flat Earth Society. A conspiracy theorist. It's a code word. Just like when he says back here, Stain on the United Nations. It has made this once respected institution contemptible in the eyes of decent people everywhere. But for the Palestinians, this UN House of Darkness. The UN House of Darkness. Another code word for the sons of darkness. So the flat earth, the anti-Israel flat earth society, the flat earth part, the conspiracy of the flat earth is a code word. No wonder why Jeremy, even when he did his news broadcast and he tries to bring some justification to my father-in-law's death, but the one thing he will not change is what Mr. Johnson wrote when he said, you're a flat earther. He even shows him the video Citing, according to what Mr. Jeremy said, this video right here are the fallen angels imprisoned on earth. The original title was imprisoned in Antarctica. He actually cited that video as evidence for flat earth. You know, I am not a flat earther. But you know, in a way though, it should upset flat earthers because that means your family and loved ones could be killed and the state of Tennessee, at least Morgan County anyway, is not going to care one moment. But now I know it's a code word. The Flat Earth Society is a code word for those that reveal the crimes and sins of the Zionist in Israel. That's what it really is. That's why Jeremy didn't recant it. That's why... This, this gets me, right? That's why Mr. Johnson wrote that statement that he wrote. It was covered up using a code word. But then Netanyahu says that other part, when he says in there, and we're going to play it one more time for you on this, because now I need to look at the other issue. Respected institution, contemptible in the eyes of decent people everywhere. But for the Palestinians, this UN house of darkness is home court. 
decent people everywhere. In other words, those people that are pro-Zionist, that are pro-killing Palestinians, pro-killing Lebanon, Lebanese. By the way, when they took out Nasrallah, do you know that 50 children were killed and 94 women? Nearly 500 people, but 50 of them were children, 94 of them were women. If you knew there was one bad guy hanging out in the neighborhood, but it was going to cost that many lives, would you approve the strike yourself? Most people never would. But the UN or United Nations, all, in other words, what he's telling you, all those nations that are united against the Zionist regime are considered the house of darkness. He's letting you know that war of the sons of darkness and the sons of light have begun. The only problem is, is in truth and reality, the sons of darkness are his own group. Here we go right here in the Dead Sea Scrolls, for example. Let me make it a little bigger for you. God's mysteries to destroy wickedness. In one of the trumpets of pursuit they shall write, God has struck all the sons of darkness. He shall not cause his wrath to return until they are exterminated. Netanyahu is just giving you a code right there at the United Nations. The war on the sons of darkness has begun. And they will not stop until everyone is exterminated that they plan to exterminate. You know... In one video that, did, that spoke about this, they spoke about Albert Pike's World War III doctrine. I don't think Israel necessarily is following this, but of course the Freemasonry is, and of course you have that 21st degree Mason, by the way. Think about that just for a moment. In light of the fact that we were likened to a flat earth society by the DA, and then there's the 21st degree Mason. I did a video on this a long time ago. He's the Noahide. He's the Noahide Mason, literally called a Noahide Mason that carries out the judgment and the capital punishment upon those that have violated the seven Noahide laws. This letter here attributed to Albert Pike and there's some uh, debate as to whether or not that really was true. Allegedly, it was housed in Great Britain in the, in the museum there. They have disputed that. But it says the Third World War, World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the tour of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of, Islam, of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Now, that's, that's their view. All right? I want to also share with you, this is, I'm just kind of lumping all this together, and maybe I should do it as a separate video, but while we're at it, let's just go ahead and look at it. Um, Netanyahu shares two maps at the United Nations. This, now this, by the way, way um, I don't know when he spoke about this here. According to this, it's one day ago, but, uh, but maybe not. I, but I want to play this part here for you, though, because this is very interesting, too. It reminds me of General Wesley Clark when he said they're going to take down seven nations. But I want to get into the blessing and the curse issue here. Watch what Netanyahu has to say here about what's a blessing and what's a curse. Against Iran in the Seven Front War, the line separating the blessing and the curse could not be more clear. This is the map I presented here last year. It's a map of a blessing. It shows Israel... Israel and its Arab partners forming a land bridge connecting Asia and Europe between the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Across this bridge, we will lay rail lines 
energy pipelines, fiber optic cables, and this will serve the betterment of 2 billion people. Now look at this second. Now, let's back up, look at the map. If you will notice, you have Sudan, Egypt, and of course Saudi Arabia, but in the mention of the nations that had to be taken down was Sudan, Libya, and uh, they don't have to show Libya on here as of yet, but still it's pretty close when we look at the this will curse. Serve That's the, the betterment blessing. of two billion people. Assuming that the blessing now look is at to this Israel. Second map. It's a map. Look at the second map. It's a map of a curse. It's a map of an arc of terror that Iran has created and imposed from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean. Iran's malignant arc has shut down international waterways. Now, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and of course down there, yeah, Yemen because of the Houthis. But again, those were nations that General Wesley Clark said had to be taken down. And why? Because the Silk Road has to come across the northern region as well. Besides the sea, also the northern region. The sea is because of India. And the trade route from India. The land route is because it's got to come from China. The Silk Road Initiative, right? But those are what they call the curse. Now, oddly enough, if you look at the scripture on that, right? Genesis chapter 12. Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, into the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. And make thy name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse you. And again, that blessing and the curse is to Abraham alone. It's a single person. You is to Abraham. Not to all the people that are called Jewish to begin with. Now, that blessing and was passed down to, to Isaac, and it was passed down to Jacob. And why was it passed down to them? It was because of the promised seed that God had promised Abraham. That's why he promised him to be a blessing. And anybody that cursed him would indeed be cursed. And when Jesus came on the earth, that blessing and curse was upon him. If you blessed him, you were blessed. If you cursed him, you were cursed. And Israel has remained and exiled and scattered. Still to this day, they're scattered to the four corners of the earth. You've got a little small group back in Israel today, but it's still not all of the Jewish people. They cursed the true seed Jesus Christ, and that's why. By the way, speaking of Israel creating all these wars and everything that are going on, uh, we'll come back here to uh, Mr. Lavrov there. Don't forget what Mr. Eduard Hudo says. He talks about Menachem Schneerson bringing about the war that would totally annihilate Ukraine. And as a result... He would pit the Russians and the Slav against each other to make that new greater uh, state of Israel, the, the Ukrainian nation. He says here in a 1994 speech published in Volgata newspaper, Chabad leader Menachem Mendel Schneerson outlined his plans for destroying both Ukraine and Russia. Slavs among them, Russians are the most unbending people in the world, he says. Slavs are unbending and as a result of their psychological and intellectual abilities created by many generations of ancestors, it is impossible to alter these genes. Slav, Russian can be destroyed but never conquered. And that is why this seed is subject to liquidation. That's what Mendel Schneerson said. And at first, a sharp reduction in their numbers. First of all, we will divide the Slavic nations of 300 million and half of them Russians into two small countries with weak and severed connections. And that's what they did on 2014 with the Maidan coup. For this, we will use our old method, divide and conquer. We will try to pit these countries against each other and suck them into civil wars for the sake of mutual destruction. The Ukrainians, he said, 
would think that they are fighting against the expansionist Russia and struggling for their independence. They will think that they have finally gained the, their freedom while they'd become fully subdued by us. The same will be thought by the Russians as though they def defend their national interests and return their lands illegally taken away from them and so on. That's what he did. And that's exactly, and it goes more into this, more depth of that, no doubt. But Edward Hudos, he was a Chabad Jew. He was born in uh, Kharkiv, Ukraine in 1945. He also was the mayor of Kharkiv. But then Rabbi Schneerson tried to recruit him for this very goal. That's when he refused to accept it and eventually left the Chabad organization to fight against that very evil that they're doing. But now Netanyahu has announced it to the world. He has announced that the war between the sons of light and the sons of darkness has begun. Of course, claiming himself to be the sons of light. I think it's the other way around. But he has claimed it. He's also given us a code word. If you are considered anti-Semitic, against Israel, bringing the masses to go against Israel, they will call you a flat earther. And now I know why that attack was done against my family. Not to mention the 21st degree Mason being the Noahide. And oddly enough, someone come to my home with something, 21 with them, that caused my father-in-law's death. God will be the judge. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.